are the Tamal Intelligence Agency, the Thea. Salute, stand back, stand by. <laughs> and but, however, the Whiskey Brothers uh, cult following oh. is voracious. I don't know what <laughs> I don't know what what adjective, bro. But hey, they're hey, animals. I'm not saying I'm not. I'm. It's it's almost like I'm t- talking to my squadron, like my battalion. <laughs> like, hey, man, them, them Whiskey Brothers, bro. I, I feel like they a little bit more hardcore. But uh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, bro, like we might have to figure that out. We should we should do a jam session some night, man. Just something. put y'all's fans and our fans all in the same room. Well, well you know what? Uh we did want to put together a um like a little get together, like at uh, like maybe at Kobo's Q over there about Minute Maid, like you know, had some tacos and some yeah, drinks and stuff little- and had a, you know, maybe I don't know, maybe cigars might be in, in, in order. But uh but yeah, we'll definitely keep you in the loop for that. Dude, it'd be a pleasure. But I th- I think it's cool the fact that we're we all live in a world now where you can generate some crazy following in this in this sea of noise, right? If you just do good work and you just consistently give it to them. People are fickle, is they got a thousand million options, right? Yeah. So if you just feed them every day or every week or whatever whatever agreed upon arrangement there is, yeah. they'll continuously show up until you betray that. And it's the ones that have been around the longest and have that, oh man, you're never gonna let us down. Those just build it. It's a groundswell, man. Take That's notes, it. Bud Light. Take notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, say, don't get slave started on Bud Light, man. He he did a whole rant on his podcast. I, was, I just <laughs> did, man. I was so. No, I feel you on a lot of that. I feel you because <laughs> what he was saying is, and I'm paraphrasing, I'm putting words you can't, in my please. mouth. It's basically like there's a million causes out there, and you have to be mindful of what cause gets assigned to you or what cause you subscribe to. Mm-hmm. Because there's always going to be an overabundance of just things to rile you up. Um, you're never going to run out. You're, yeah, nev- yeah, yeah. you're never going to run out. We could pick, and I, I, I giggle at this all the time because it's never going to be wrong. Pick a country and pick a crisis and just slam them together, and it's real. You know what I mean? There's the inflation in Venezuela. You just pick two yeah. random <laughs> things. You Ch- pick the best example for inflation. That, that just random, literally is a grad. That's yeah. an absolutely perfect one. But you child trafficking in Rwanda. Yeah. I'm just picking yeah. stuff. Again, you, perfect. You could <laughs> child mining. The, the, in <laughs> the water crisis in Uganda. Every, you know, yeah. you just pick Civil something. war in Zimbabwe. No. It's a hun- guaranteed somewhere in Zimbabwe yeah, 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 some yeah. of that's going down. So when people are like, don't you care about this? I just yeah. go, no. <laughs> And it's yeah. not that I don't care about that. It's just that we collectively don't care about a lot of stuff, right? Take we, the, yeah, we pick and choose it, and cherry pick. Because you have to. Because yeah. you couldn't possibly take in everything. You, you, there's no way your human brain could process a million crises every single day. It, it, so you pick the ones that are closest to you, right? We happen If Ukraine is biggest in the news and there's more groundswell behind that, well... I can, I've only got about bandwidth for maybe three causes, so let me change my frame here. Let me present to, I'll pretend to be upset about women's rights or whatever, or abortion or whatever the other hot button issue is, and then I'll pick something else that's a little closer to home. They got to get the homeless people out from under 59 or yeah. whatever they're yeah, yelling yeah, yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But past that. Yeah, property taxes. Don't get me started yeah. on property taxes, bro. You got your things you, you, you get upset about. And then you just discard everything else. And it's like shopping and fucking and going out and and going out to like little little convenience stores and stuff. Now it's like now you gotta tip them with the with the with. <sighs> hey, would you like to donate to the? It's like no no, no bro. They no, got no. self on, checkouts man. asking me to tip now, <laughs> and it's they're not they're not giving it back to me with my change. It's like, damn, <laughs> so I got a tip now when did, I go shopping. Did the iPad do a good job? <laughs> It's it's the most I, I bristle over that, man. If you just if you just spin the iPod iPad around, I will just flagrantly spin it right back. Like I just uh uh-uh. uh. And it's not that I don't think you did a good job. It's just I'm not sure what you did. I'm not yeah. I know you're being paid for this. I'm I'm not trying to shortchange anybody, but bro, I, I get asked to tip 27 times a day. So the all these causes, all mm-hmm. these little things that we get upset about, I just quit getting upset about because I don't have the inventory Dude, for it. Dude, not only that, but there's so many different ways 
to be upset about one particular issue. Like, there's so many angles. Mm -hmm. There's, like, so many sides of being upset. You can be upset for something, against something. Uh, oh, you can be mad at the people who are mad at something, or you can be mad at the people who are supporting. Like, there's, there's 50 different vectors into everything, and you just have to stop. I've had to stop and ask myself, like, how much emotional bandwidth do you have? Mm -hmm. If you're going to – it comes back to those six or seven things. Because the truth is, not only – this is this is the rub to that six or seven things is that not only is it how we keep our babies from getting eaten by tigers. Right. Not only is that just the human ability to we have to parse through, but we also that six or seven things is ultimately what we're made of. Right. You can only focus on six or seven things, despite your best ability to cover the table, despite your your desire to say, I love all these things and I'm impact. I'm, I'm in all this. You're only ever in six or seven of them. And it's yeah. probably your wife and or your kids. You probably got a slot in there for religion. A lot of people do. You got a slot in there for some, you know, some people love their cars or their, that, that hobby that takes up 10 hours. And the rest of it, you're just allocating it to three or four things that you want to make part of your identity. And yeah, yeah. It, that it, gets sometimes real Sometimes it dangerous. starts like, like climate and veganism. Like so many things become, you know, CrossFit. So many things yeah. become people's religion. Yes. Um, <laughs> And, and you, you, you have to choose those things yeah. intentionally. And for those reasons, I say, just like Christopher Hitchens, he's a famed atheist. His quote about atheism was that we're all atheists. Mm -hmm. He goes, I just believe in one less God than you. And when I listened, I was like, oh, he is right. You don't believe in Thor. You don't believe. You know what I mean? Like, we're all. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Me immortal. <laughs> and then that's when the lightning fell. But the, we're all not believing in every other God but our own already. So I'm sort of that way with causes, except I've just removed those last couple. Yeah, That's everything it. everything's relative. Like, for example, uh, the members of the THEA, the Thermal Intelligence Agency, stand by, stand by, uh, they're on the Patreon, we have the Discord, and they be on there like, man, I'm tired of the propaganda in this country and, you know, the censorship on this and, and how dare Twitter 1.0, you know, <laughs> uh -huh. the, the, the Twitter files. And, you know, they're, they're like, like super open-minded about a whole lot of stuff. And then I'm like, hey guys, I saw this really cool documentary that, that suggests that maybe the earth is flat. Just throwing it out there. You know? And, and, and they you know, jumped on you like Yeah, this. and they're just like, whoa, 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 you go, You're going a little too deep. Yeah, 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 yeah. What are you doing? People are so, their, their beliefs are, so, it's so fragile sometimes where I've try, I try to think of good ways to have conversations with people. Like you take that dude, that I talked about on my podcast about the Bud Light situation. But the the truth is I try to tell people at the beginning of any conversation, if we're going to get contentious about it, I, I'm going to take my beliefs and I'm going to put them over here in this box and I'm going to close the box. And I know when I leave, I can pick that set right back up and leave it. It's not in jeopardy. It's not going anywhere. And I try to get the person on the other side of the table to approach it the same way. Hey, Put what you believe in this box. Let's put a nice little safety latch on it so it can't go anywhere. And then for the next 20 minutes, let's talk like we don't believe this stuff. Mm -hmm. Let's just entertain a what if other yeah. side of the equation. And it's a it's a really uncomfortable position. You ever do that? You ever like be in your car and you're you're in the passenger seat. And you know, you're safely in the passenger seat riding with somebody. And you close your eyes and pretend you're driving. From have you ever oh, played that shit. dark game with yourself? Where you're like, I'm gonna pretend I'm driving and see how long I can keep my eyes closed before I realize, you know, like before oh. I have to open them up and make sure I'm not driving again, oh, right? No. Like I played. <laughs> I ain't never did that. Oh, I, it's just when Juan drives sometimes. I it's, mean, dar it's, yeah, dar it's dark. It's dark. It's dark game. That's how I drive now. What is it's for a <laughs> But that's that's sort of the. That's sort of, it's like playing chicken with yourself in that regard. How long can I comfortably leave my beliefs in this box mm -hmm. and discuss yeah. it from a very uncomfortable place yeah, before have I have that. to grab my beliefs again? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's a security blanket sometimes. And um, trust me, bro, like, I like I just be sitting back looking at all these um, triggering issues and I just be like, okay, here's what I'm curious about. You know what I mean? Where I'm uh, yeah. like... Is this an organic agenda happening <laughs> or why all of a sudden, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. people, everybody's looking for meaning. They're looking for, they're looking for a signal in the noise. They're looking for something that makes sense to them. And the, instead of trying to figure it out in the now, because it is so chaotic, most people have a tendency to go back to whatever that first real thing they believed was 
and they just grab hold of it and they carry that through like oh well at least i know this this i got something that makes sense so when they're chirping or they're yelling or they're whatever it's because everything's so chaotic and they're just yelling from that place of comfort which they don't stop to take the inventory of the fact that that place of comfort might be something that was shoved in your dumb noggin 30 years ago right like maybe mm -hmm. you should just hold it up to the light and see if it still stands up. I do that with yeah. movies I used to love as a kid. You know, yeah, they're not yeah. all, they yeah, don't yeah, all yeah. make it into my current favorites. Uh, even like albums and like, I mean, artists like, okay, wait, so Tupac was, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, wait, so was he playing a role on some of these gangsters? <laughs> he certainly, I know, I know the role he played in my life in the mid nineties, but I can't tell you that yeah. some of that holds up to like yeah. this, me listening to some of that Cause stuff. Cause Tupac was like 23 when he was saying a lot of this shit. Yeah, I'm exactly, just throwing it exactly. out there, dog. But I'm so just I was that there. age when I was like a young comic. So Chico I thought said he that. knew something. Pac was, <laughs> Pac was he like doesn't young, stand yeah. for the rest of us. I, on this. I, I didn't know enough to know he didn't know what he was talking about. That's the, <laughs> arguably, if, if, Pac, if Pac was a comic, uh -huh. arguably, look, so he wouldn't know anything. He was at like all. in the coffee shop coming it, up with gangster shit. He would know, be like, inexperienced. All yeah, of exactly. the look, bro. So many of our heroes died at twenty-seven. Like oh, when you man. look at the you look at the Jimmys and the Kurt Cobains of this world, the people I thought were sages, the people I thought were were saying all the stuff that was gonna save us, and I was Biggie like, you was didn't even young. all of them. I was like, you didn't even get to the good part. They put you out didn't classics. Even, <laughs> Jesus Classic. was 32. Selena. He was 33. 33. Okay. 32. I only well, know because I do a joke. in the middle of it died 33. Okay. That's uh, correct in my man. biblical. So <laughs> he was 33 when he died? Yeah. When I crucified him, right? 32 when he was doing all the, all the talking. All the crazy right. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. None of these people really had enough life experience to know what they were. Can we get some 60-year-old saviors? That's what yeah. we need. Some 60-year-old rappers and saviors. That's the... <laughs> Hey, yeah, I'm 43. Well, if anybody want to buy my mixtape, 20. <laughs> well, I don't know, man. The older they get, I mean, not, it's not always great. I mean, look at Joe. Okay, so there's there's a that <laughs> a little too old there, and he, you know, that, price is prime. Okay, so there's but there's a sweet spot. <laughs> there's a sweet spot when you're still functional and you have some experience. You know what I mean? I'm not sure who's and got you're not their, corrupt. Yeah. I'm not sure who's got their hand inside yeah, of Joe yeah, Biden. Sure. I think it's Ryan Reynolds. I'm not sure, <laughs> <Yeah>. but like <laughs> it's the you, at a certain point they're just propping you up weekend at Bernie style. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. wheeling you out to yell your old opinions. You're not having to think of anything new because why think anything new? You might not be here tomorrow. Yeah. So right. the sweet spot. Late 40s, early 50s. Yeah, I think a lot of stuff y'all talking about, too, is you got to, like, when you're saying, like, the seven things, you got the seven things, people need to really think about that. Because, like, when you have a small number of things that you focused on, that's living. You could actually live through that. With all the extra noise, you're reacting. You're yes. not even living anymore. You're fucking reacting Tactical. to yeah. everything that's happening. You're not living an actual life. You're just going through the motions at best. The difference between proactive and reactive is one of the biggest distinctions. Uh, I, it's made such a difference in my life. And it's there's a lot of work to be done in getting your life to a point where you can be. It requires chiseling a lot of things off, right? You got to get rid of some people. You got to carve off the warts and the rust and the this and that. But when you get it down to just that, just That's the hard. Essence, I'm not even there it's yet. A, it's so hard. I mean, you have to like reassess, re reassess, what does that say? Oh, nice. Because okay. you, you got to oh, also God, think, too, with the with with the influx of information and stuff that we have now, you, you think back to the 70s and 80s and stuff, people were so much more closed minded because they didn't have access to a lot of the information. So they, they're really stuck to their beliefs. So we kind of cut them slack on something. But then you got the other spectrum of that shit where some people don't know what they believe. And now we're in crazy land because they're like, we're open minded. Where are you? I and you're like, in everything. Hey, there are some things you got to like well, dial down. Dog. Society. Look, I think most of us, this is the down. This is the terrible part of the Internet. The Internet always amplifies the edges. Mm -hmm. Right. Most of society, 80 percent of us, maybe 90 live in this this functional bubble in the middle. We see each other we say hello we interact and co-mingle and go to the grocery store and watch movies and yeah. eat at restaurants and drive on streets and we're not really having that many problems yeah it's these edges that 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 all the noise and all the problems and all the insanity and all the crazy stuff and i just think you know most of us we live in that hey here's let we exclude that i'm not gonna yeah it's i believe you should be able to love anyone you should be able to marry anyone i think you should marry a table okay get over there with the five percent you're you're part of the or crazy now end. they got some shit called maps bro where they trying to say 
they done took the love is love thing all the way to like, well, children can consent to their gender and they See, can consent like, to adult. <laughs> clearly, those yeah, people yeah, are yeah, on yeah. the edges that we don't listen to. It's yeah, the, yeah, yeah. That, it's, that it's the how many times you're going to hear, the, you know, the people who call everybody a Nazi or the people who yeah. drop the N word every other day. You guys sit on the edges with the other rest of us going to drive on these streets and do yeah. everything else. And it's a it's it's hard to figure out what's important in all of this and like you have like indoctrination that happens where you don't even be knowing like i'll look back at some of my professors in college and be like how commie was this chick <laughs> you know like now looking back but uh but hey um i, I want to also shout out our other sponsor not 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 to pivot from commie to beef delicious grade a beef uh Ooh, that's gonna be yo man shout out tequila mary's creek cattle come you might want to rinse some of these bro there might be some lint or dust uh you sure okay it'll kill all that uh mary's creek cattle company mary's creek cattle company m triple c what you do is you hit up m3ctx.com dude you can reserve your beef for your family grass-fed you could get half a steer or the whole steer and have your freezer packed and ready to go you won't have to buy no beef in the in the groceries for the longest the prices of beef is fluctuating. You got the World Economic Forum wanting you to eat cricket paste and all that. You ain't gonna have to worry about that, man. You're gonna be one of the chosen few. You're gonna be eating beef like the elites. Big and dog. you know where your meat's coming from. So you know exactly. Right there in the where ranch coming, dog. Victoria, Texas. And uh they ain't gonna put they ain't gonna hit it with the mRNA, big dog. <laughs> hey, algorithm, relax. All right. <laughs> AI, chill. But you're going to be eating beef like the elites, Big Doc. You're going to have the protein and the energy and the sustenance to, to roll with the punches. And so you can stay focused on them on the main things that really matter, not all the damn noise. All right? gains. That's what y'all need in y'all's life, some more signal-to-noise ratio. So when people get on Kickstarter and they type in Slade Ham and they contribute to the mm -hmm. Kickstarter... Uh, when do you pr when not, when do you plan on releasing, producing it? So we should be out by the end of the year. I'm... Um Looking to shoot in August. I've got a pretty decent summer's worth of touring. Uh, I'll go out, hammer out the rest of the show. There's a couple of little chunks in the middle that are still being developed because that's how the best comedy happens at the last goddamn second. Uh, so we'll do that. Rewards should start going out right after that. Um, I'm doing some cool stuff. I think uh, all this experience with comedy specials, the one thing people really seem to care about is getting their name in the credits. Um which is always cool, right? You just watched a banging special. Seeing your name as having been attached is really cool. I'm doing some handmade artistic thank you cards for that. I'll do some social media shout outs. You do the big package, which gets you everything. You also get a signed copy of my book. So I made it, a, I, I tried to do it the way, like if I was scrolling through Kickstarter, what would make me contribute to a comedy special? Mm -hmm. So prices and rewards are kind of that. But mainly, like, I'm making this show, and I want people to be a part of it, and I want them to take some pride in the fact that they had something to do with it because it's yeah. you don't get a chance to really participate in something authentic and real, and I'm trying to make that. Well, so. you, you've always rode like that, man. Like, uh, Sorry, cut you off. Like, organic, uh, earning your fans. Uh, like I said earlier, man, like, cult following, putting in the work, being consistent, hitting from all these different angles. Um, like, you've always rode that way where, like, Fans have always supported and had your back. You know, other comedians and, like, all the cool deals and the cool projects that you're involved in. So I, I expect nothing but big things. What city are you shooting your special in? Doing it right here in Houston. In, in Houston. Houston. 100%. So in his tickets go on sale, Houston. You it's, get those tickets. It's, 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 we're we're going to do it right here. And I'll, I'll make sure I let you know That's so you can up. let them know. Because uh, your fans are good people. I'd love for them to be sure. in the room. Uh, but, yeah, Houston. Uh, shitty tippers, but. Is, <laughs> <laughs> just spin that screen back around. The... Uh, <laughs> Edit the, that. It's it's got to happen in Houston. I think it's uh, it was very important for the uh, every everything we've done. I've been very uh, good about show. Houston's such a pretty girl if you let her dance. And with okay Jer with Jerry, I've heard that one before. It's it's the uh, H Town's a bad bitch. When you, when you let her <laughs> show her BBL, BBL dog. <laughs> when, you, when you let H Town show off her BBL, uh, so she's pretty if you let her dance. Yeah. You gotta turn the lights down though. She's got it. <laughs> she ain't pretty if you turn. I never the lights. heard that expression. But hey. <laughs> it's, it's, She's, and by that I mean there's there's elements of the city that shine right like when I did when we did the Whiskey Brothers special 
it opens up on this this shot like a uh, time lapse of Houston and it runs this uh, this Hunter S. Thompson quote about the city and that's kind of how we start it with Jerry's special. I did some drone footage uh, at night. Oh, you were trying to get some slabs for one yes, of the shows, yes. right? Yeah, we were. So it's it's all this uh, constantly thinking of ways yeah. to showcase mm-hmm. Houston. Um, and then when we did Andy's, I got that great shot of him coming across uh, d- um, Eleanor Tinsley Park with downtown there. So for mine, there's going to be some Houston in it. So, so Slade knows uh, Scarface and he knows me, but, he, you know, he has me for the slash. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Scarface on the Whiskey Brothers special. That was one of the cool moments in my life was uh, getting to do Damn It Feels Good to Be a Gangster with him on stage. Nice. Uh, he came out and closed that Whiskey Brothers special. Oh, and that's amazing. Yeah. Dude, it was, uh, there's the friend part of me, right? Yeah, yeah. Like the knuckle, me and, me and Brad who are knucklehead, you know, drinking buddies and uh, hang Brad out Jordan, uh, for those that don't know. And AKA then there's, Scarface. there's the Mr. M- Mr. Scarface yeah. I grew up on. Right, I've never seen a man die. Yes. I smile, I face. <laughs> so to, there's half friend, half fan. Where you're standing off, watching the show happen, yeah. kicking it with your boy, and then ten minutes later, you're on stage with this legend, and it's just like, all right, man, yeah. for tonight, you can be a legend. Dude, you can I be saw my him, knucklehead I s- tomorrow. I saw him rock the rodeo with Bum B. It was crazy. He's, he's he, he played the guitar and all kind of shit. He's mm. a musician, and that's yeah. the that's I think what attracted like our friendship started. I used to bartend when I first moved to Houston. I was bartending this little joint called the Davenport, and it was like a low key. A lot of NFL players, a lot of rappers would come in, but it was because it was not crowded, and it was I think it was because Brad had made a he had rapped about it or something in a song, and. So I would bartend in there and it would be dead. So he'd come in on Tuesdays and some Tuesday nights, literally just me and him in the bar. So we would take turns. Oh, so you've known him that long. Oh, yeah. We go back to like 08, 09, whenever I first moved here. So we would trade off like my iPod and his phone and we'd just play music back and forth. And it was that's when I was like, oh, shit, you're like into music music because it would come time for him to do a song and it would be Nirvana or Arctic Monkeys or something like completely out of left field. And then we host we did a couple of pilots for a podcast uh, that we were trying to launch a while back. And one of them was music centric. So we would play so- same kind of vibe and. He would bring uh, Mama Said by, uh, is that Waylon Jennings or Merle Haggard? Merle Haggard. Mm -hmm. He would bring like old country to the table or something. I was like, oh, your music roots go deep. So when he plays guitar and stuff, it's all a lot of old classic rock. Was this after his stint in New York as uh, president of Def Jam South? I think he had come back from all that. So okay. that was all. That was mid or early two thousands, maybe when I when I came into the picture. That must have been, yeah. It must have been only because like <laughs> there's this footage uh, from the Kanye documentary where Kanye was like, "Hey man," he was just like a young producer, mm-hmm. and he like <laughs> so funny, bro. So Scarface is in New York at the time, being president of Def Jam South. Kanye is just like a up and coming, almost not not nobody producer. He had some heat on him because he was working with Jay Z, but uh, he, nobody really knew him as a rapper. So there was this studio session they had on tape where uh, he's like, yeah, I'm trying to have Scarface come over here, man. I want to show him Jesus Walks, I think. He's like, I want him to get on it. And Scarface is just kind of like, man, I'm a fucking legend New York executive <laughs> right now. But yeah. And then and then he's like, but yeah, all right, pull the beat up. Let me hear what you got, kid. And then he pulls out like his uh, retainer <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> and like sets it on the counter as he's like trying to put his CD demo in the thing. And Scarface is like. Man, what's, what's that? He's like, he's like, oh, that's that's my retainer. He's like, your what? He's like, my retainer. He's like, out your mouth. And he's like, <laughs> you know, Scarface is gone. He's one of the best. We used to, some of those nights would sit. His sense of humor is so his sense of humor is so elevated, and he's so he's once he gets fixated on one little thing. It's game over, bro. It's, yeah. So if he saw that retainer on the <laughs> table, probably, believe probably. me, if that was two o'clock in the afternoon, uh, he got it. Somebody got a text at midnight about that retainer. It's a it's a he doesn't let things go. That's hilarious, man. <laughs> Signal to noise. Get on Kickstarter right now. Please do uh, get your benefits, man. You can probably get your autograph book. You can get your name in the credits. I'm hooking people up. man. Yeah. Make sure y'all go check it out. Uh, Slade. Uh, he's got a, a track record of dropping nothing but heat and well-produced stuff so check out the whiskey brothers podcast the slate ham project podcast mm-hmm. uh catch yeah, go, them on, go on the road my, go to my youtube and uh everything should be there uh the road dates are on slateham.com but my my participation in social media at this point i'm so pulled back yeah. you know what everybody's so they're trying to sell me shit they're trying to talk me into stuff i can't yeah. it's back to that noise you're, I, you're like jay-z you just say you know what 
the, the just I, make the art you know? it's output only is yeah, the yeah. i can't control it after the yeah. fact anyway so but yeah i know you're gonna have a lot more uh, uh some other new listeners as well after this because um you know every time we have good people on that may not be on y'all's radar especially in the discord all the members of the thea stand back stand by uh i already know dog they're gonna be like man it's slate ham dude man he's pretty fucking dope man i start looking them up so uh, well let's send it on my ego needs it i my, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, yeah, get life, my self-confidence needs it my ego i killed a couple of years back no nah, man you good you undeniable <laughs> uh hey thank you for coming on the show man what did he said podcast thank you guys for tuning in hit that subscribe to like share it leave a comment and all that we appreciate the love Sass.